Hi, this is Anthony from LearnHiring.com and this is about USA recruitment training program for recruiters, business development managers, account managers, HRs and CEOs of startup companies. I do theoretical and practical training through Skype and this course explains how to become a technical IT recruiter for US and non-US requirements, US culture and its values how to manage a US recruitment team, the do's and don'ts in an office environment, the tips and techniques to do more closures. If you need further information, please reach me at trainer at learnhiring.com or 9082157239. This is about me. I have close to 15 years of experience in US recruitment, Indian recruitment, software development, and immigration manager. I worked as a recruitment head in India for a US based company, Bain sales manager for US operations, accounts manager for Wipro, a recruitment lead and HR generalist for India and as well as US, technical recruiter, and I worked as US immigration manager also. I started my career as a software developer and then I worked in US for uh, seven years as a data modeler developer, programmer analyst, data warehouse specialist. And after that, I was working for um, recruitment and as well as immigration for the last 10 plus years. And uh, this uh, training from learnhiring.com is not only for end-to-end -end recruitment process, but I also teach immigration from the recruitment perspective, software development from the recruitment perspective, accounts management and business development from the recruitment perspective. More than 500 plus unique visitors visit my website on a daily basis. And apart from the courses mentioned here, I also teach HR generalist training program, accounts management training, and uh, consular visa processing training. This slide is about different departments present in a staffing firm and the different roles played by the recruiter, bench sales manager, HR, finance, head, contacts management specialist, system administration department, and how these departments are interconnected with recruitment and what is the responsibility and the duty of the recruiter to take it forward to do the closure. This slide explains about end-to-end -end recruitment processing. What is the duty of the recruiter in end-to-end -end processing? and the recruiter has to connect with clients and as well as vendors, system integrators and project implementers. And what is the difference between these tier one clients, system integrators, project implementers and end clients? In this slide, I will explain software development life cycle and why a recruiter needs to know about SDLC. I'll be explaining different phases in SDLC and the recruiter has to pick those important topics so that it will be easy for the recruiter to source resumes based upon the job description provided by the client or the tier one client or the system implementer or the project implementer. In this slide, I will be explaining about the different IT job titles that are contained in the job description or the job requirement, whatever you call. I have mentioned a few titles here and uh, as a recruiter, he or she has to understand the exact job duties and responsibilities of these titles. Then only he or she will be able to source the resumes correctly. And this is a challenge for the recruiters. What I have seen in my experience is the recruiters are not able to understand the job description as well as job duties. They source incorrect resume, irrelevant resume, and they submit to the accounts manager or the client. Unfortunately, the client, after seeing the resume, may be unhappy with the resume submitted and the accounts manager will also feel the same thing. Finally, a good opportunity will be lost because of not understanding the job description. So, when you join my course, I will be explaining in detail about the different titles, what is required and what is not required. And this is called as IT requirement technical analysis. I have also shared on this slide, you can see that also. In this slide, 
I'll try to explain about Boolean search and this is important for everyone, those who want to become a recruiter. And uh, this is also very important for the Bain sales manager since he has to sell the resume to the client. These are three simple classes and how you combine them to get the proper resume is very important. I have provided several uh, Boolean searches and uh, the students have to see that one, practice that one to become a successful recruiter. In this slide, I will try to give an overview about this Boolean search and this is a continuation of the previous slide. Here, in this particular session, the students will be requested to work on Boolean searches on different technologies and the students will be also requested to combine Boolean searches for different skill sets and uh, every Boolean search will be evaluated by me so that uh, the students get handful of information about this Boolean search. In this slide, I will be explaining about the sourcing techniques for sourcing resumes. There are different ways to source resumes and uh, some of them are related with job boards and head hunting, employees database, own database, etc. etc. I'll be uh, providing uh, details in detail about how to use job boards, LinkedIn, and how to use uh, paid networks also like uh, Google AdWords and other internet search. And then ATS application tracking system, that is also an important one. And I will share details regarding that one. In this slide, I'll explain how to create job posting and as well as uh, sourcing resumes. In the last time also, we have touched uh, sourcing resumes. And here, I'll be having one-to-one -one discussion with the students where they understood the sourcing technologies and as well as uh, the different types of sourcing methods. Now, creating job posting, that's a very important parameter in the recruitment in process. When you're 100% efficient and effective in creating the job posting, then it becomes good to source more resumes. So when you join the class, I'll be discussing these things in detail. In this slide, I'll be explaining about LinkedIn. By using the conventional or the traditional method, we have used so many sourcing technologies. And for the last five to six years, you can see the importance of uh, digital marketing and how this digital marketing has held many companies in their uh, domains. Now, as far as this uh, US recruitment is concerned, a recruiter has to know about uh, the things that I mentioned on LinkedIn. And uh, I have uh, closed many positions by using LinkedIn. And uh, when you join the class, I'll be explaining about LinkedIn. In the last uh, nine slides, I have explained about the end-to-end -end recruitment process of covering sourcing resumes. Now, in this slide, I'm going to talk about salary and benefits. Now, a recruiter has to think why salary and benefits are very important. There are so many components in salary and there are so many components in benefits. If a recruiter is able to understand the salary structure, and as well as the benefits provided by their company, then it will be easy for them to source the right candidate at the right time. When you speak to top-notch candidates, they may ask you several questions about the salary and the benefits that are provided by your company. So you need to ensure that you speak the correct salary details and as well as the benefit details so that the candidate is attracted and joins in your company. Now, the next slide is about tax terms. There are two important tax terms. One is W2 and the other one is 1099. And for their convenience, the staffing companies have splitted this W2 and 1099. I have explained in more detail in my website learnhiring.com. And uh, if you get a chance to take my classes, you can ask whatever questions you do have on this tax terms. This tax terms is a very important topic and uh, there are ifs and buts conditions 
So what will happen if an American citizen joins in a company? Our EAD holders like uh, L2 EAD, H4 EAD, E3 EAD, if they join your company, or what will happen on cop to cop situations? Why 1019 is important? Who issues 1099? Why employees are going with W2 rather than 1099? Why the employee is always interested to hire on W2 and not on 1099? So these things we can definitely discuss and take it forward. In this slide, I'll give an overview about full time and cop to cop. There are two methods by which you're going to hire a candidate in your company that may be either full time or cop to cop. When you hire someone on full time or on cop to cop, you need to speak with the candidate and as well as vendors. For these uh, full time and as well as cop to cop, I do have standard templates by which you can get the personal details, education details, and as well as the technical details from the candidate and important details from the vendor. As far as the technical details are concerned, it's uh, based upon different technologies. Suppose if you want to source an Oracle developer resume, I have a separate template for that one. And if you talk with the Oracle apps guy, I do have a separate template for that. So these templates will definitely help you to talk with the candidate and get more information. In the last slide, I was explaining about uh, 1099, COP to COP, and as well as W2. And uh, the previous slide is connected with this uh, day 13 slide, which is HMB cap process and other US employment visas. So, if you get to know the importance of visas and how they are employed in the company, then you can use the terms to employ a health citizens. Are HMD holders, are L1 holders, are EAD holders, whatever it is. Now, when you work as a recruiter, at times you will be given the chance to work on HMD cap petitions. That is, you will be doing recruitment for HMD cap petitions. In that situation, you need to understand the HMD cap process and the various forms, documents associated with this HMD cap process. Since I was working as an immigration manager and I worked on uh, H&B, sale ones GCs and different visas, I can explain to you in detail how this H&B cap process and uh, other uh, things like H&B visa transfer, H&B extension, H&B amendment will help you to become a successful recruiter. In the last slide, I was explaining about H&Bs. And in this slide, I'll be explaining more detail about HMB transfer amendment and as well as extension, how to verify uh, approval notices, and how candidates convert from F1, H4, L2, L1 visa to HMB. By knowing these things, you'll be able to source the right candidate working on different visas. In this slide, I'll explain green card process and uh, EAD cards how one gets green card and how people are getting EADs. I will uh, explain uh, the prevailing age process, recruit process, perm process, I-140 and I-485 process. And moreover, like uh, how uh, H4s get their EADs, L2 get their EADs, GCs get their EADs, OPT holders get their EAD and CPT holders get their EAD. This is a very interesting topic. And if you get to know about the green card process, H1B process, and how candidates are obtaining the EADs, then you will become a strong recruiter and definitely you can grow up in the ladder of recruitment. In this slide, I will be explaining about resume and visa verification. Recruiters get resumes and as well as the approval notices and other documents related to visa. They should be in a position to verify the resume and as well as the visa and filter out the resumes that are not required for the requirement. This is very important and I can explain to you in detail about what has to be present in the resume, how it has to be formatted, what are the details that the client will be looking for and uh, I can also tell you guidelines about how to verify the I-797 approval notice or the visa notice. In this slide, 
i will be explaining about the sales process that is involved in an organization when you work as a recruiter in an organization then they do have business development team product sales team project sales team bain sales team and accounts management team i'll be explain detail about these topics in this slide i'll be explaining about bain sales and as well as proact hiring bain sales is very important for recruiter and as well as proactive hiring is important for a recruiter for bain sales we do have bain sales managers and for proactive hiring also we have a separate team in some organizations in some situations the recruiter will be asked to play the bain sales manager role and as well as proactive hiring role in different departments i will be explaining these topics in detail on day 18 In this slide, I will be explaining SOP for bin sales and as well as recruitment on different scenarios. SOP means standard operating procedures, and these standard operating procedures are different for bin sales and as well as recruitment. Similarly, each and every department in a staffing company have their own SOPs, and they follow it <coughs> aggressively. This is a very important class, and that is why I call it as revision. from day 1 to day 19 i was explaining about end to end recruitment process immigration topics tax term topics different sops bin sales and as well as the different functions that are in a staffing firm in this revision class i'll speak with each candidate and ask them to explain what i've explained in those day 19 classes and this class may be an extended class for couple of hours also here several students ask so many questions and because of that everyone will get the knowledge of recruitment bin sales and other things upon completion of this course students will be able to work as a technical recruiter either fresher or junior for us requirements students will have more conceptual knowledge when compared to a middle level recruiter the self confidence would have increased junior recruiters can work as middle level recruiters senior recruiters can work as a team lead apart from these classes i also provide certification which will explain that you worked on active requirements from clients who can join in this recruitment course freshers beginners with graduation h4 l2 visa holders recruiters bench sales managers sales managers us hr employees working in us corporation big or small business entrepreneurs interest to open new staffing firm in corporation india or in us directors managers without recruitment knowledge interest to do recruitment job in part time interest to work as a freelancer one who works for domestic requirements and one who works in call centers so what are the benefits in joining this course so those who are new us they will get at least starting salary of 500 per cent per month and they will earn around 100000 dollars per incentives when they reach the levels like director or the vice president within 10 years one can climb up the recruitment ladder to work as a director similarly in india starting salary of 15000 rupees per month plus incentives 30% increment for the first 5 years and then it will be based upon the performance recruiters will get minimum salary of 50000 rupees after couple of years an opportunity to go to us if they are really strong performers in this slide i have provided uh, information about how to join this program and fee structure you can discuss with me because of the various options that i do have and based upon the various requirements of the students so how we train we'll share uh, the skype username and microsoft account name I accept our invitation to join skype attend our training session so how we train before the session starts ppt presentation will be sent to the student the same slide will be shared on skype and train will run through the program slide will have notes for each topic so that they can refer whenever it is needed interactive sessions through skype and how to pay you can pay through paypal or neft account or paytm i hope uh, you have enjoyed uh, the explanation provided by me on uh, different slides and um, this recruitment training program is different for each student the 
catalog or the syllabus that I provided to you is I am taking the batch on this syllabus four or five people join in that batch and you can expect at least 100 to 150 questions and moreover in my batch there are different levels of people juniors middle level and those people who wanted to set up a company in India and as well as new us at times I get bench sales managers at times I get contact managers also so based on these situations you will get to know the different questions asked in the real time when someone is working as a recruiter or a bench sales manager and if that person joins in this course then most of the things will be practical related questions the one advantage that you do have is because of the vast experience that I have in software development immigration recruitment HR and accounts manager and apart from this I teach other technical training course also during the course session I'll try to explain what are the other courses so when you want to become a recruiter the things that I've explained <coughs> are in my learnhiring.com website also so when someone reads my website they may be able to understand 80% of the technical jargons and the process present in recruitment however if they ask questions then learnhiring.com may be not the right, right source for providing answers so if you want to know more if you want to learn more in recruitment and if you want to go in US have a decent salary have other things especially with recruitment HR accounts management please reach me once again my name is Anthony I'm the owner of learnhiring.com and my number is 9884-615-745 and you can also reach me at trainer at learnhiring.com. Thanks. Bye.